All right, so let's go ahead and look at um, our rebuild surface tool. We're going to be taking this simple NURBS vase uh, that I created using a curve and the revolve tool just like we did in class. Uh, pretty basic stuff. And then we're going to turn this into a relatively high polygon uh, vase based on this using the rebuild curve tool, but first I'm going to take you through the insert isoparm tool as well uh, just to show you a slightly different workflow uh, that I like to use. It gives me a little bit more control as to where uh, I actually insert detail into a model before I rebuild the surface. So I'm going to come in here, I'm going to right click on my model, I'm going to come into isoparm mode. It's a sub-object mode inside of your NURBS. And I'm going to come up here to surfaces and scroll down to insert isoparms and go to the options. All right. With this menu open, I'm going to come into my object and I'm going to start to insert isoparms. Now these blue lines you see are isoparms. Essentially it's the equivalent of an edge in polygon mode. So what you want to do is add detail to the areas where we're going to need detail. For instance, these curves around the lip, uh, probably the length of here, I'm going to add a little bit of detail. This cove here at the bottom so that we don't lose our overall shape. Now if I come over here and I reset my tools, this is what your, reset, your uh, insert isoparm tools is going to look like um, by default. It's going to be set at selection and it's going to be at one multiplicity increased by. Now I typically use between selections. I'm going to come over here and increase my isoforms to currently I'm going to stick it on five and I'm going to start adding some detail in a few of these areas. I'm going to start right here. I'm just going to left click on this isoparm. I'll hold down my shift and then click this guy here. I'm going to hit apply. And you can see that it gives me five new isoparms in between the distance between the two selections. I can do the same thing down here. I go back into isoparm mode, left click this bottom one, come down, shift. Now, Generally, you like to keep the overall distance between your isoparms somewhat similar. So I'm going to have to crank this up because it's about twice the distance. I'm going to put 10. There we go. So now we have a similar look. I can already see that this little gap right here, I'm going to want probably one more isoparm right there. So I'm going to go back to isoparm mode, select him, hold down shift and select this guy. Come over here, change my insert to one, and hit apply. That's going to smooth that transition out just a little bit. I can do the same thing here as well. There we go. That'll keep that curve nice and smooth. Now the other areas we need to really work on this bottom edge is a pretty dynamic curve, especially once we get in here to the cove near the foot of this vase. So I'm going to go back to isoparm mode. That's by holding down right click and dragging up. I'm going to left click that isoparm, hold down shift, and come to this one right here, the inner isoparm. I'm going to crank that up because I know this is getting into a higher detail area. So I'm going to add 10, even though it's a shorter distance than we did from here to here. I know it's a more dynamic curve. So in order to maintain the look and feel of this curve, I need to add more isoforms. You can see how by doing that, it rounded this out real nice. Okay, now I'm going to come down here and do the same thing on the inside. Right click, isoform mode, click this bottom, and then come down here and click this guy. I'm going to add, I think, 
10 inside of here as well because you can see how tight this curve is and you can see now that I've inserted those extra isoforms how much smoother that transition is through that area all right now we're going to do the same thing to this bottom lip now we know that to keep this lip really nice and rounded we're going to need to keep that number high I'm going to bring them down to about 8 because it's really short distance. I'm going to hit apply. And there we go. Now the bottom here, nobody's going to see the bottom of this vase, so it doesn't really matter if we add in extra detail there. Remember, even though we're doing semi-high poly uh, objects, we do still want to conserve a little bit of memory in the areas where we can. So I'm going to come up here, I'm going to hit this upper lip, right click, isoform mode. I'm going to click this inner edge, isoform, and hold down shift and click this outer one. This is slightly farther than the, on the bottom, so I'm going to add two more isoforms to that. Hit apply. Also, this being the top of the vase, this is where we're going to be looking at this item the most. So if I'm going to use extra faces, or make extra faces in an area, I want it to be in the areas where the eye is going to be drawn to the most. And then as we progress down, I'm going to come in here, isoparm mode. I'm just going to select multiple isoparms this time, three to be exact. So I'm going to grab this, shift, click this middle one, shift, and come in here. The rest of them all the way down, I don't need to worry about because we're not going to be looking inside of the vase. This is going to give us just enough detail coming down the inner edge of the vase as to not uh, throw us off. So because it's the inner edge though, and I know I'm not going to need a whole lot going on there, I'm going to knock my isoparm count down to four. and I'm only going to insert four isoparms. So I'm going to hit in between each of those selections. So you can see right there. All right. With this done, you're thinking, well, let's go ahead and add some to the outer edge here. Well, we would, except that we've already removed our history from this particular bottle, which means I'm going to be able to add them to everything except for right here, where the original curve existed. All right, so we're going to have to do that in a slightly different manner. We're going to use the rebuild tool, rebuild surface tool. So I'm going to X out of here. I'm going to come back up to Surfaces, Rebuild, Options. All right. I reset the settings so that you can see what the default is. Now, by default, it does the U and it does the V. If I want this just to go around my object, I only want it to operate in the V currently. So I'm going to keep this on NURBS. I'm going to select V, and I'm going to up the number of isoforms or spans that I have. I'm going to crank this up to 20, and I'm going to hit apply. Now you can see that I've given myself a large number of additional isoforms throughout here. but it buggered up my other um, so what we're going to do is come in here to the V and I'm going to crank up my number of spans in the U and the V at the same time. Get rid of this. And I'm going to crank this up. So this is just another way to increase our detail here. The problem with this is we don't get 
the level of control that we wanted. We would have had to still come back in here and then do all of the isoparm work that we had done before. All right. So, how do we turn this into? By the way, I just undid my my way out of that, and we're going to not worry about getting the additional spans around the side for now. What I want to do is go ahead and make sure that we know how to turn this guy right here into a <clears throat> into a polygon. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and bump this guy up. Do my V and knock this guy back down to what we had. Forgot I undid my way too far back and we got rid of a lot of issues here. All right. So we have additional detail in all the areas that we want. Now I need to go ahead and change this guy into polygons. So I'm going to come down here to the bottom, polygons. I'm going to hit keep original. That way I can keep my nerve surface and then rebuild this multiple ways in case I don't like what I've gotten or for whatever reason that I want to keep that. So I'm going to come down here. I'm going to hit match render tessellation. It's going to get rid of all this and just go ahead and use the tessellation that we've already decided that this object needed. All right. Polygons. I'll come back here and make sure I'm clicked on quads. But if I'm matching render tessellation, it's going to give me quads anyway. But I like to make sure it's selected. Number of spans. I like what I have here already, so I'm going to click that off so it just matches what I have exactly. And then I'm just going to go ahead and hit apply. Now you can see that I have a new object, but it didn't give me 100% exactly what I wanted but relatively close. It did give me a, a little bit additional detail at the top, but still not quite what I was looking for. Now another way we can do this is to come over here. Oops, I think it's because I had V selected. Yep. Nope, that is not the reason. Okay, so another way we can do this is like we were doing earlier. Where I take this off, and I come into my control points, and then from here, I hit apply, and it gives me an exact one for one in my tessellation, but it inverses everything as far as my normals. So I have to come back into my face mode, double click, go to my surface, I'm sorry, mesh display, and go to reverse. And there we go. So now we have an exact one for one relationship between our nerve surface and our new polygonal surface. Notice this one didn't work quite as anticipated. I'm going to go ahead and delete that guy for now. Now, if we want this guy to be an even higher res now that it's a polygonal surface, we can do so. Close that. And I come back into my polygon mode. And then up here, we have smooth. 
Now, typically, I would say to do this from your um, options. So if you go to Mesh, Smooth, Options, we can come in here like so. But for the most part, if you just come up straight to your toolbox, your dock, and then just hit your Smooth, which is right here, right next to Mirror, we can crank this up and decide how many subdivisions we want. Remember, if we watch up here, let me undo this. If we look up here, currently we have 1,560 faces for this guy. If I smooth it, it's going to take this and it's going to increase it four times as many. It's going to draw a line here and here. So I'm going to end up each face is four faces. So if I smooth it, my 1500 becomes 6200. All right. And if I add another level of division, now my 1500 is 24,960. All right. So you can crank this number up and up and up and up, but just be aware that the higher level of subdivision you get, the more memory it's going to take. All right. One level of subdivision will be just fine for this object. And if we were going to use this inside of a scene, honestly, this would be far too many for a single object. But for the purpose of uh, high poly or semi high poly modeling, uh, this is pretty nice.